Hello everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we'll talk about a device called galvanometer which is used to measure current in a wire or potential difference across a circuit. There are many types of galvanometers. We'll study two basic types of galvanometers, the tangent galvanometer and the moving coil galvanometer. So first let's see the tangent galvanometer. Now, the tangent galvanometer uses the concept of a compass needle and we'll talk about compasses and magnetism due to the earth which end up moving the compass needles in much detail in a later video. Right now there are only a few simple things you need to know about that. One is that a compass needle always points in the direction of net magnetic field. So for example, if this is a compass needle, this is the south pole, this is the north pole of the compass needle, then if it is free to rotate along this axis, the axis that is uh, away from the viewer, if it is free to rotate in this direction, it will keep on rotating and ultimately point towards the direction of net magnetic field. Uh, the magnetic field due to the earth is from the south to the north direction. So a compass needle when left in a place in which there is only the earth's magnetic field will end up pointing towards the north. That this is something you always know a compass needle points towards the north. Now it actually doesn't always point towards the direction of net magnetic field and that's because we confine it to move in a particular plane, the horizontal plane. So for example, let's say you're standing at the foot of a building and you have a compass in your hand, a needle which is free to rotate in the horizontal plane. And due to the earth, the net magnetic field happens to point from you towards the terrace of the, the terrace of the building. In that case, the compass needle is not going to point towards the terrace of the building because it can't move away from the horizontal plane. So it's going to end up pointing towards the foot of the building. Right. So the compass needle doesn't necessarily point in the direction of B it points in the direction of BH, which is the horizontal component of magnetic field. Of course, this assumes that you've kept your compass in the horizontal plane. So whatever the magnetic field at a point is, you take the horizontal component of it and the needle will point towards that. If there is no magnetic field present other than the Earth's magnetic field, then it will start pointing towards the north. And when we talk about BH, BH generally refers to the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field. Right, so that's the symbol BH which we'll be using. So now let's see how a tangent galvanometer works. And I, I've tried it before, but I've struggled to draw this figure a little bit because it should technically be in three dimensions. So I'm going to try to explain it as best as I can and I hope you do understand it. First, we'll just take a compass needle and we just let it move on a horizontal plane so that it points towards the north. That will give us the direction of north, right? So let's say that points towards, uh, let's say that points upwards, right? So we know the direction of BH, the component of the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field points in this direction. Now, I would like to explain the setup to you first. This is the horizontal plane. The plane of the monitor is a horizontal plane. We are looking at it from above or from below and we see that the north direction is uh, not vertically upwards but in the direction vertically upwards as you see it from the monitor. Right. So what we'll do is we'll take a coil current carrying loop and we'll just loop it around the coil many times to increase the effect. Right. So let's say the number of loops is small n the current moving through this wire, any one wire will be IA and the area will be A. So we know NIA will be the magnetic dipole moment of this current carrying loop. The direction will be the direction of the area vector that is perpendicular to the plane and in this case because this is the direction of current I have chosen. So if you curl your fingers around this direction, it will point towards the viewer. Right. So we'll take this loop and we'll put it like this. Right, so I hope you understand it. It's a loop which is now in the vertical plane and it is uh, in the vertical plane and also in the north-south plane. Right, so this is north, this is south and this is how the current will be moving in the loop. So once the current starts moving in the loop, it will create its own magnetic field and that will be in this direction. See, the magnetic field due to a current carrying loop is perpendicular to the area vector of the loop sorry is in the direction of the area vector of the loop perpendicular to the area so we've kept this loop in such a way that the area vector points towards the right 
So initially what will happen is the compass needle will point in the north direction because only BH will be acting. Finally, when we at start moving a current in this loop, there will be a magnetic field created by this loop and that will be equal to mu naught Ni by 2R. The magnetic field due to a current carrying loop at its center is mu naught I by 2R but since we have looped this around n times to increase the effect, it will be mu naught Ni by 2R. Right. So the net magnetic field will be a resultant of these two and it will point in some direction, let's say like this. And we'll call theta the angle between B and BH, right? Let's say we call this angle theta, the angle by which the needle is deflected. Earlier, before there was any current in this loop, the needle was pointing towards north in this direction. Now, when we apply a current in this loop, there's another magnetic field towards the right. So this is the net magnetic field and this will be the direction in which the needle is pointing, right? Clearly, we can see that tan theta is equal to B by BH which is equal to mu naught Ni by 2R BH. BH by the way is a quantity which we know. We can easily measure the magnetic field due to the earth at a particular point. What this gives me is I is equal to K tan theta where K is equal to 2R BH by mu naught N. So now we have what we were searching for from the beginning which is a device in which whenever there is a current flowing through the wire, the needle deflects by an amount which is proportional to the current in the wire. Now in this case it's not exactly proportional because there is tan theta but whenever we'll talk about galvanometers, we'll assume that the deflection is quite small. So what we can write is I is equal to, excuse me, K theta. Right. K is called the reduction factor of the galvanometer. It is basically the proportionality constant. So I'll repeat what we did again. First, we just kept a compass on a horizontal plane and saw that it points in this direction which was north. Then we kept a circular current carrying loop in the same vertical plane in the north-south direction. So it created a magnetic field in this direction which created a net resultant magnetic field in this direction. So initially the compass needle was pointing here, now the compass needle is pointing here, so the compass needle has deflected by an amount theta. So and theta as long as it is small is proportional to I. Now we've already seen ammeters and voltmeters and how they work. They each have resistances called shunt resistances and ammeters have a small shunt resistance in parallel and voltmeters have a large shunt resistance in series. Why did we need to do that? One of the reasons was because galvanometers are very sensitive and we, if we wanted to measure the current between 0 to 1000 amperes, a galvanometer generally would measure a current between 0 to 10 amperes and we would need to create a shunt resistance in parallel so that if a 1000 amperes current is flowing through the wire, then only 10 ampere goes to the actual galvanometer and the rest 990 amperes goes to the shunt resistance. Why was that? Why did we need to do that? Because of this. Because galvanometers only give an accurate reading when theta and hence I are small. So galvanometers are accurate when I is small and that is why we have to attach shunt resistances in series and parallel. I will not talk about shunt resistances again in this video because we have seen once you have a galvanometer how you can create an ammeter or voltmeter by applying appropriate shunt resistances. One more thing when we talk about a tangent galvanometer, uh, the equation is I is equal to K tan theta. So what we need to find out is what is the sensitivity. So the sensitivity means if theta changes by a small amount, how, by how much does I change? So all we need to do is differentiate it. Di by D theta will be K sec square theta D theta and what we want is, uh, sorry, Di will be this. I have taken D theta to the other side. What we want is Di by I. So di by i will be this by k tan theta, k k will cancel which gives me d theta is equal to d i by i times sec square theta by tan theta. So that will be 1 by cos square theta sin theta by cos theta. So we will have sin theta cos theta in the bottom which will go towards this side. So half of sin 2 theta. Right. So from this we see that d theta, a small change in theta for a current is maximum when sine 2 theta is 1 or when theta is 45 degrees. 
So the tangent galvanometer is most efficient when theta is near 45 degrees because in that case a small change in di would create a greatest change in theta. A small change in i would create a greatest change in theta rather. Right. Now this galvanometer is generally not used very much simply because i is equal to k tan theta is the actual equation and when angles are small it gives an accurate value but if you want a really sensitive value theta goes to 45 degrees and that i is equal to k theta is no longer valid. So we have a second type of galvanometer which is called a moving coil galvanometer. And though even in this case the argument that theta should be small is applicable, it actually gives us a current that is proportional to theta, not proportional to tan theta on some other value. So this is the galvanometer that is generally used. So let's see how this works. So what we need here is a constant magnetic field in one direction of known magnitude B. So that can be accomplished by a solenoid or that can also be accomplished by what is called a horseshoe magnet which is something like this. So it's actually a standard bar magnet which is made up of current carrying loops but these are the positive and negative ends. So in this direction uh, the magnetic field is in, one, in between this place the magnetic field is in one particular direction. Anyway it doesn't matter how you do it all you need is a constant magnetic field in one particular direction and that magnetic field should be known. So what you do is uh, you take a current carrying loop and you just loop the wire around it many many times let's say the current through the loop is i the area of the loop is a and the number of turns is n and you take this loop and place it like this again it is placed in the horizontal plane uh, such that if you're just looking at it directly you won't be able to see it if you're looking at it from up then you'll be able to see the actual coil right so and once the current starts moving in this coil uh, it has a magnetic dipole moment in this direction, right? What is the value of that magnetic dipole moment? It is n i a is in this direction. B in this B is in this direction. We know that if you keep a current carrying loop or a magnetic dipole moment within a constant magnetic field, it experiences a torque which is equal to mu cross B, right? So, and in this mu is in the downward direction, b is towards the right, so mu cross b will point inside the plane. That means this loop will try to rotate in this direction. Right? So, if nothing uh, was else was present, it would move in this direction and ultimately become like this, such that mu would be parallel to b and there would be no more torque. But we attach another thing to this system, which, which we've seen earlier in simple harmonic motion, and that is called a torsional wire. What is the property of a torsional wire? If you have a wire like this and you attach a disc at the end of it, you rotate the disc by an angle theta, the bottom of the wire will be twisted by an angle theta whereas the top won't be and it will create a restoring torque equal to minus k theta. Right, just like a spring but in terms of rotational motion. So we'll attach a torsional wire like this. It's not upwards, that's just for showing the figure, I do struggle with figures. It's pointing inside the plane. So this will be attached to a torsional wire and as soon as the loop starts rotating, rotating there will be a torque produced in the opposite direction by a torsional wire. Right. So the equilibrium position of the loop would be something like this where there would be some torque acting mu cross b in this direction and there would also be some restoring torque acting due to the torsional wire in this direction and equal, in an equilibrium they both would cancel each other out. So in equilibrium mu cross b would be uh, n i a b and that is equal to k times theta right magnitudes are the same directions are opposite such that it's in equilibrium so what happens because of this is we can see i is equal to k by n a b theta so in this case we see that the current is not proportional to tan theta or sin theta it is actually proportional to theta but again theta has to be small because all these rules which are different forms of Hooke's law are only valid for small deflections k by nab is called the galvanometer constant and again it is just the proportionality constant between i and theta now for this moving coil galvanometer, 
there is a particular quantity called sensitivity and it is defined as theta by i so theta by i comes out to be n a b by k that means n a and k are obviously constant but the greater the magnetic field the more sensitive the galvanometer is and we'll see in one of the later videos the presence of a soft iron core within the magnet greatly increases the magnetic field by sometimes up to factors of a thousand and that can greatly increase the sensitivity of the moving coil galvanometer now once we created this galvanometer we can use it to measure the current through a wire or if we know the resistance of the whole coil we can actually measure the potential difference at the ends of a wire as well so the galvanometer can be used both as an ammeter and as a voltmeter again the only constraint is that you need to apply an appropriate shunt resistance and for ammeters you have small shunt resistances in parallel and for voltmeters you have large shunt resistances in series i've already told you why this is the case thank you